Hey again and welcome back. In this next activity we're going to reflect on the reading that we did. So the first thing that we're going to wonder about, what did Say learn about signature whistles and how did she figure it out? And how did visual representations help? So take a moment and think back through what, what really important piece came up for her about the signature whistles? And how did images like this help? Maybe pause the video here, tell someone in your home, or write down your thoughts for these questions, and I'll see you in a moment. So Saeg found that change in pitch is the most important thing that dolphins are listening for. They're listening for how high or low the sound is. And dolphins can even recognize each other by their unique signature whistle. Each dolphin has their own signature whistle, and they can listen for changes in pitch and really and actually recognize each other. And to figure that out, she created and analyzed visual representations like these of the dolphin whistles. The visual representation showed Saeg that the, pat that the signature whistles have patterns of pitch changes. So we can see pitch over here, and we can see over time what changes happen in the pitch. So I see up, 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 down, up, down, up, 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 down, and then down to up. Now if you have your notebook, please go to page 64. If you don't, that's okay. Just grab a piece of paper. And we're going to write an answer to the question that we've been investigating, which is how can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with one another? So what I'm going to have you do is keep this screen up, pause the video, and take a moment either on page 64 or just on your piece of paper to write your answer to that question, how can dolphins use different sounds to communicate with one another? When you're ready, come back. All right, welcome back. We're gonna go back to those same dolphin whistles. and We're gonna do a little bit of exploration with them. So since the dolphin whistles were hard to hear, Saeg used a computer to make visual representations of each whistle. So these are actually the visual representations of the three dolphins that we listened to. This type of visual representation shows how a sound's pitch changes over time. So we have the pitch over here and the time on this side, on this axis. Now take a look at this visual representation of dolphin A. I'm going to play the dolphin A sound, make this smaller. And one more time, again, look at the visual representation of the sound and compare it to the actual sound. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing for dolphin B. So you might have noticed some differences between Dolphin A's whistle and Dolphin B's whistle. Let's actually make this a little bit smaller. You can see Dolphin A and Dolphin B. Let's listen to each one. That was A. And that was B. Huh. So just think about what differences did you notice there? And now we're going to listen to Dolphin C. So keep an eye on the visual representation.
And I want you to think through this question, how are the three whistles alike and how are they different? There's no right or wrong answers here. Just want you to take a minute to reflect on that question. This is a great chance to pause the video and write down your ideas for these questions. How are the three whistles alike and how are they different from one another? When you're ready, come back. And so what did Saig set out to investigate about dolphins? How did these visual representations help her? Well, I know that she helped, she wanted to investigate how dolphins recognized each other's calls. And those visual representations helped her visualize their signature whistles. They helped her conclude that a change in pitch is the most important thing that dolphins are listening for to recognize another dolphin. And they helped her compare the signature whistles of different dolphins. So we can look at the three of these and we can tell these are very different pitches. These are very different sounds and signature whistles. The people we read about in Seeing Sound also use sound in their work. And when we think through, they use sound for a lot of different things. It was to recognize if people could hear well. It was to see what animals might be hearing. It was to adapt sound for music or movies. So visualizations of sound and sound representations are really helpful in a lot of different areas. Now I want you to just keep thinking, what did we learn today that might help us figure out how the dolphins in Blue Bay are communicating? And that's the question that we're going to return to in the next couple lessons. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon.